En esta ocasión estamos muy contentos porque tenemos la oportunidad de entrevistar a Will Cathcart, quien es el jefe global de WhatsApp. Well, Will, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Well, my first question is regarding platform security. Sure. What is WhatsApp doing to prevent these hacks? We know that some hacks are the users falling uh, into the trap in phishing or social engineering. But sometimes, even if the user does nothing, mm. they wake up with their WhatsApp hacked. Well, you know, I think as a Reminder for everyone, I know many people know this. Um, one of the first things just everyone should know is that we use end-to-end -end encryption to keep all of the messages you send mm -hmm. safe as they travel through the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and so that means when you send a message to a friend, only they and you can see it. But you're right, we also need to make sure WhatsApp on your phone stays secure and that no one else gets access to your account. Exactly. And sometimes what happens is someone will request a code on your behalf and trick you exactly. into giving it. So I think the first thing I could say is just never, if you get a code from WhatsApp, never give it to anyone else. The second thing I'd, I'd really suggest people do is turn on two-step verification. So to do this, you go into your settings, mm -hmm. under account, you turn on two-step verification. And what that means is if someone goes and gets access to your phone number, mm -hmm. they get access to the, your phone number and get a code from WhatsApp, even then they won't be able to sign up for your account because they will also need your your pin. So I would encourage everyone to do that. Um, and then the last thing is, I mean, this is something we take very seriously, but one thing I think it is useful for everyone to know is if someone gets access to your WhatsApp account mm -hmm. and puts it on their phone, they won't get your messages from before oh, okay. because they're not living on WhatsApp servers because of end-to-end -end encryption. So that is also an important thing to keep in mind. I mean, let's do everything we can to keep WhatsApp secure and on your phone, but also remember that one of the benefits of the way we've built the service is if someone does log in and they won't get access to all of your historical messages. And can I get my WhatsApp again? Yes, absolutely. So How? you can go with your phone, go re-register for WhatsApp, re-access it, put it back on your phone, set up two-step verification. Okay. If you have any trouble, contact customer support. And you have like a new function like in the voicemail, right? The verification code called to the voicemail. Yeah. The so, human needs to do something. So one of the one of the, the things we've seen actually is, well, mm -hmm. we can text you a code when you're signing up for WhatsApp, mm -hmm. but if texts aren't working, you can request a voice call. And we did see some cases where, where that voice call would go to someone's voicemail. Exactly. And then someone would access their voicemail account because they knew their voicemail password, or maybe it was still the default password. Uh -huh. So again, this is all where turning on two-step verification really helps because then it means someone would need two things to try to log into WhatsApp. They'd need the code, but they'd also need the pin that you choose and only you will know that. So I think that's the easiest thing everyone can do. Is it true that the European Union is now forcing you, as they have done with another companies, to open your platform and be more compatible with another messages uh, services like Telegram, for example? So it's, it, it's true, the, the European Union has, um, as part of their Digital Markets Act, passed a requirement for messaging services to offer what they call interoperability in the EU. Um, we've just actually yesterday published some of the early details of how that's going to work with WhatsApp and we're building that out. Our biggest concern here, look, totally can see benefits to people wanting to access WhatsApp from a different app, but we really want to make sure we don't lose any of the security that we have and we don't open our users up to spam. So the way it's going to work is anyone that does interoperate with WhatsApp will need to use end-to-end -end encryption. Okay. Um, we'll take as many steps as we can to be really clear about spam, to give users choice. So if they want this, they can have it. If they don't, they don't have to. And we'll see who's interested in interoperating. Um, Telegram specifically doesn't have end-to-end -end encryption by default, so I think they need to be more secure to be able to do that. But it'll be open in the EU for other companies, and, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. And could you tell us about um, what kind of futures uh, WhatsApp will have when integrating AI into chats natively, such an audio-to-text uh, mm -hmm. transcription or near simultaneous translations? Yeah, this is actually one of the things we've been, um, not just me, but a bunch of folks from WhatsApp have come to Mexico this week. And one of we know is just asking people. Okay. We went to a university, we've been in people's homes, we've invited us in just to talk to how they, mm -hmm. us about how they use WhatsApp um, and asking them what they'd want us to do. And so we're getting lots of great ideas. A lot of people have mentioned voice messages. They love to send them. They don't love to listen to them. Exactly. And if there were a way to get a transcription, okay. that would be amazing. Obviously, we'd want to do that in a way where the transcription is generated on your phone and we WhatsApp never get to listen to the voice message. We want to 
keep that secure. Um, but some of the other things we've been building using AI that are really interesting, one is a tool around stickers. I've heard so much this week about how much people love sending stickers. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the tool we've been testing lets you generate any sticker. Mm. So when you go to look for a sticker, instead of having to look through the list, literally type whatever you want. All right. If you want a, a walrus on the beach drinking a margarita, you just type that in, and a few seconds later, you get a bunch of stickers right. that AI have generated. So I, something like that, I think, could be really delightful. Mm -hmm. Make it really fun just to send whatever sticker you want. We're also testing um, a version of Meta has created an AI assistant. So it's a it's a, an agent you can text. So you can have a thread in WhatsApp that's called Meta AI and you can text it any questions you have, ask it to create images that look a certain way, ask it for fun ideas, and making that accessible in WhatsApp. But I think we're gonna figure out over time what amazing things are available. I think transcription's a really interesting yes. one. I need Translation <laughs> I hear a lot, yeah. especially from my, you know, my family in California who need to work on their Spanish. I need to work on my Spanish too. When they're traveling to Mexico, they wanna be able to communicate with people. Wouldn't it be so easy if it could just translate for them? And, and how is the new way of viewing your contact status updates different? Do you think these changes will make users see the content more or what is uh, the added value to compare to Instagram stories, for example? Yeah, well, the, the biggest change we made was the introduction of channels. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to put that somewhere in the app that felt natural, so we put it with status. And the idea being, these are both features where you can go and see what someone's doing. Status might be a friend seeing their photos. Channels might be following a, a news organization or someone like you and hearing from you. And we wanted to put them in the same tab. And so that's why we made a bunch of changes. One of the things we've been talking a lot to people about this week is, is what do they like about status? What, what improvements could we make? What would make status better? Heard a lot um, of, of requests for better filtering functionality, more creative tools. So I think that's a thing we'll go work on because you know, status is widely used across Mexico and we want to make it more available for you, including you know things people have loved on Instagram. We could bring that there um, and make it more possible. And how can we block contacts without having to open the chat? Yeah, we just added an improvement for this. So I've heard the feedback. Okay. Um, now when you get the notification, we added it as an option, for example, on Android where you could block immediately from the notification without having to go in. I think maybe we could add something too in the thread list as well, but totally get it. You get a message, you know it's not from someone you want. No need to go look at it. You just want to block it right away. And how was the acceptance of the short video sending features? Yeah. Um, and, what, um, and what kind of people use these features? I think the acceptance so far has been really good, although I think people, some people are still learning about it. Uh -huh. One of the cool things with a lot of new WhatsApp features is we introduce them, and then some people find them, and they send them to their friends. Uh -huh. And then their friends see it and say, wait, how did you do that? I want to do that too. And so I think the short video message is a little bit yeah, of a form the, of that. The, 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 the circle. Uh -huh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, we almost thought of it as like, this is like audio messages, but why don't we add video? Mm -hmm. um, just make it easy and fun to send something. So it's been really exciting. Um, you know, in terms of who's using it, it's very early, so we'll see. But I'm hoping it grows kind of like audio messages and becomes another fun way to communicate when Be, you don't because want to type. At the first time, do you, do you have like the, in the bottom of the yeah. microphone, only do you tap it yeah. and you can record a video. Yep. But, now you go to settings and yep we've been trying to figure out the right way to make it accessible okay we had it in the audio button and then we mm -hmm. found some people got a little confused about how do i switch back and forth exactly so that's why we took it away from there and we're trying different options to get it really easy to use but the format i've heard so many positive things about people love sending how do you um, users behave with respect to screenshots mm -hmm. uh, and how did they realize that people are taking screenshots of their profit peak. Ah, yes. Well, a real thing we focused on is actually for messages. So we added this feature called view once messages where you can send a photo and the recipient can see it only once. And with that, we've done what we can for those messages to block screenshots on your phone. So actually the system will block it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we want to do is be really clear with people about the limitations of what we can prevent against. Because while we could block a screenshot or try to, your friend could take out a second phone and take a picture of something. Yeah. So, you know, the reality is we're adding functionality. We can't wait. Disappearing messages, things could expire, view once with screenshot blocking. But at the end of the day, if you do send something to someone, you need to worry about the chance that they could take a picture of it. They could pull out an old-fashioned camera and take a picture of it if they wanted to. Exactly. And one of the main reasons people don't switch mobile uh, operating system from Android yep. to iOS or vice versa is the difficulty of migrating WhatsApp mm -hmm. <laughs> conversations. Does the company have any solution to make easier to switch from the system yeah. to another? Yeah. So we've been working on making this better. A couple years ago, it was impossible. You yeah. really couldn't. We've, we've made it possible now, mm -hmm. so you can transfer your messages. Mm -hmm. We know it's not perfect and it needs to be improved. And you know sometimes there's errors. So we've been working on making it better. Yeah, we hear this a lot from people, right? You want to get a new phone. You want every option available, but you want to bring your history. It's a really powerful story about how much attachment people have to all of their historical messages. I have this too, right? I have threads with my family going back years mm -hmm. with photos. Oh, and exactly. everything and you want to be able to transfer that so mm -hmm. we've been trying to make it a lot better and hopefully if people are switching now you'll see that the improvement soon 
Well, it's already now. It is already. Uh, okay. It is already possible now. Okay. So, so you can switch now and transfer your messages, and we're making that easier and easier over okay. time. And we know that users send sensitive information, mm -hmm. such as passport numbers, yep. <laughs> photos of the IDs, etc. Yep. What advice you have um, would you give in to them? No? Should they block chats and password protect conversations with sensitive information yep. or delete immediately or any of the above? So you can send a photo of your passport. It can only be seen once and then it's gone. Okay. If that's too brief, disappearing messages is great. Turn on disappearing messages, set it to a week. Mm -hmm. Say, I just I know I want this to be gone after a week. Okay. Obviously, you can go delete it yourself by hand. I mean, do something so that it's not going to live on someone else's phone forever. Or the AI be able to identify such information and do it like automatically. Out of the case, like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in the, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see where AI technology goes. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges with doing something like that today is, again, we don't want WhatsApp seeing what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. We've worked really hard to make sure we can't see what you're saying. And a lot of the latest breakthroughs of AI are too powerful to run on a phone. But as the technology gets better and phones get more powerful, we may be able to introduce more things like this. I mean, I think that the nearer future will be something like transcription or translation. How do you imagine WhatsApp in like 2030? In yeah, six years. It's it's really interesting to think <laughs> about, and it's it's hard to predict. I think, you know, one thing I've we've seen is people are finding they want richer ways to communicate. You know, the whole idea behind WhatsApp was let's help you feel like you're having a conversation with someone as if you're sitting next to them. And if you think about it, typing is not the most natural way to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's the best. You're it's quick, it's easy. You know, you, you might have other things going on around you. You don't want to get too distracted. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, people are using voice calls and video calls and audio messages, new devices, new devices that are richer, more different devices, right? Uh -huh. In the last few years, I mean, WhatsApp started only on your phone. No. Now it's available on your desktop exactly. computer. You can imagine, you know, on your Ray-Ban stories, your smart exactly. glasses in the mm -hmm. future. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we hope to help people be able to have the conversations they want to have mm -hmm. with the people they want to have them with in as natural and rich a way as possible. Mm -hmm. Pues muchas gracias, amigos, por ver esta entrevista, esta primera parte. Los veo en la segunda parte con esta entrevista de Will Cathcart, jefe global de WhatsApp.